And then I had this one last time. And then I had verbally explained uh, the next three slides. So on for walruses, the little auks and the snow buntings, I had verbally explained those, but I put them in after we had talked. Um, okay. And then I added this slide. Um, okay, talk about I, whatever you are. You can talk about what you had. Yeah, so just uh, for the comparison, I have that for the mammals, just kind of overall, mm -hmm. uh, many require sea ice for birthing and raising young, mm -hmm. um, whereas birds might not necessarily uh, need that. Uh, the loss of sea ice is affecting prey availability and the length of time they have to catch prey. Uh, this is also somewhat applicable for birds, but birds is more so uh, the changing temperatures okay. and sea ice uh, availability is affecting prey. Um, okay. And then for mammals and birds, other animals that are migrating to the Arctic because it is now warmer are causing more competition for food and habitat. Mm -hmm. Now, may I ask a question here, please? Now, when you say, of course, the Arctic is getting a little bit more warmer. Now, did you manage to get any data to show the, how much warmer or how long the, uh, what you call the, uh, the, the season getting warmer? Do you have any data for that? Uh, I'm not sure. Let, let me pull up my research. Give me a second. Because I guess as long as you are dealing with this, maybe it's a good idea to have some data if you can, you know, like uh, some figure or something about uh, at least what, since, for example, uh, last year or this year, if you find anything like that, mm -hmm. will you have to show it? Um, you show that the temperature or whatever it is, how it looks like, for example, now and how much, for example, it used to be, for example, say, uh, many, many years back. Okay. So that is, because that basically affects also, uh, this is what, one of the criteria you are using as the, the impact is on, the, on these animals. Yeah. Yeah, so I think it's important if you manage to get some figure or something like that. I don't think it's difficult to get it, actually. No, I don't think so. I, yeah. I'll i have to look for it because I don't yeah, think I have that, a specific figure. Yeah, because once you mention about getting warmer, this, for example, and the length, for example, of the spring and summer, and uh, shows these data would be important so that one can relate to that, okay? Okay, okay continue, please, whatever you have more. Uh, that's pretty much it, unless you wanted me to go through what I have for those three animals that I added after we had talked two weeks okay, ago. Okay, you can talk about them. Yeah, sure. Uh, okay, so I've got walruses. So walruses uh, give birth on sea ice and it provides shelter. So okay. um, because it is declining and it is uh, not there for as long, this is affecting them. Uh, it is possible that ocean acidification can affect their food source because they are, they're benthic feeders, so they feed on the bottom of uh, wherever they are. So mm -hmm. they're, these animals that they're feeding on have uh, shells and other, other stuff that could be affected by acidification. Okay. Uh, changes in sea ice dynamics have affected their migration patterns, so these animals would normally migrate. Mm -hmm. um, so in spring, their migration is happening a month earlier and it's actually happening faster okay. um, because the ice is melting faster because of warming and everything. And then fall migration is starting a month later. So overall, they're losing a month on either side of this migration um, when they're on the sea ice. Okay. And then the little... Oaks. Uh, this is a long-lived seabird. Uh, they have a single egg clutch. Um, so they have a significant role in the Arctic food web because they're there uh, pretty much all year round. It's one of the few birds that lives in or near the Arctic Circle almost year round. Um, their survival has been negatively correlated with the North Atlantic Oscillation Index and the okay. local summer sea surface temperature. Uh, okay. But this is not seen uh, the same year, it's seen at a time lag of one to two years. And so effects, because of this, effects are likely seen throughout the food chain um, with uh, time lags uh, that vary accordingly. And their rising sea temperatures will reduce the availability of their food. Uh, one of their main prey is Arctic zooplankton. Um, and this rising sea temperature will uh, 
reduce the availability of that for them. Well, how would that affect the, the availability of, of zooplankton? Do you have an idea? Uh, uh, let me find that. So what I have here mm -hmm. is uh, there's a strong connection found between the uh, summer SST and uh, species composition of local zooplankton communities Okay. Um, with large lipid-rich copiopods inhabiting the colder water. So mm -hmm. they prefer to inhabit cool, cooler waters. So that's why rising temperatures would reduce the amount available to them in the Arctic. Yeah, because I think it's important to mention that, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, and then I have the snow buntings. So this one, I still think I'm going to try to find a little bit more information on because I don't have as much as I do for the other animals. Um, but I, for this one, I have, uh, they're the only passerine species that has adapted to regular breeding in the high Arctic. Mm -hmm. um, so local temperature really influences their breeding success. Okay. Um, and so climate change could cause them to mismatch the onset of breeding and the peak abundance of their food. Mm -hmm. So if they start breeding before the peak abundance or after, that will affect um, the young and their clutches because they begin egg laying as soon as the ambient temperature rises over zero degrees Celsius. But the peak abundance of food, because of all the changes that are occurring, uh, could happen before or after that. Okay. Uh, one thing I want to ask you here, that you mentioned about this type of bird, they have been adapted to regular breeding in the high Arctic, okay? Yeah. So what I what I guess myself from your talking, that basically according to this one, these are, are new arrival to the Arctic area? Uh, I, mean, I don't actually know. For say, uh, how many years, if you think, if you have an idea about that? Hundred years. I, I don't know how many years. No. Yeah, because when you mention adapted to regular breeding in the high Arctic, that means before that they are not there. That's that's my impression. I don't know. Is that correct or wrong? I'm not sure. I'll have to look at that. Okay. All right. Okay. Continue. Sorry about that. Continue. Um. So that, that's pretty much it. I haven't written my conclusion. I think that will kind of come once I write the essay, which is kind of my next step. Okay. But yeah, that's that's pretty much it for me. Okay, thank you very much. I don't know if any of the audience have any question or want to know anything else here. Okay, seems done. I guess uh, now, I guess, uh, yeah, according to this alphabetically, I may reach to Ami. Are you there? Hmm. She's not there, I guess. Did you say Amy or Ali? No, Ami. Okay, sorry. Yeah. All right. So she's not there at the moment here. Okay. Now, uh, Charlie, are there? No. Okay. Yeah. Well, in that case, I will reach to you, Ali. Okay? okay. So what do you have? So I don't have like any, like a lot more into my slideshow. I was just kind of using the time to research some statistics like you mentioned before. Okay. Okay. And bring in, uh, so I was having a bit of a hard time, but I did find a few things like, how many hospitals are in Canada and how many long-term care units there are and kind of what um, like the sources of waste disposal have been and, and numbers and, and like years and how they've uh, increased or decreased. And I've just done a little bit of work on my essay, kind of outlining it and doing some intro stuff and trying to get it together so I can uh, put some more information into my slideshow. So that's good, actually. Now, so did you add something new to your slideshow yet? Uh, not, not much. I just, just like one chart. Um, I have all, all the information, and I was going to plan to. Yeah. To well, okay. It, if you have it, you can also show it to us again and just go through it very quickly. And whatever you, whatever, even if you didn't put it yet on the slide, but if you have an idea yourself, you can talk about it 
as an extra. Yeah, okay. Yep. <clears throat> so this is just my title slide. Mm -hmm. I was gonna work on some introduction points because I've got the essay going now. Okay. Um just why evaluate, just kind of talk about the scope of the project a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then I, this is just some background stuff and I'm gonna add some more uh, those, those hospital numbers and, and stuff just so we get kind of an idea of like what the impact is and, and why it's important to kind of show this. Okay. And then just a little bit more about the scope. And then I'm still filling in the history because I'm just kind of outlining that in my uh, essay right now. Okay. And then this is just one of the statistics I found. Mm -hmm. And then this was one of the charts that I found that showed a little bit, which is good. Mm -hmm. And then just obviously the key problems that I'm going to talk about. Can you go, go, can you back to the, uh, back to, yeah, this one here. I just want to look at seem there are, okay, seems uh, there is more increase in the later years, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I was just going to kind of talk about that that trend and like okay. add. add. I, uh, yeah, I, mean, I don't know if you can figure it out yourself. Of course, you have here the number. It shows uh, the number there is an increase as a matter of fact. Okay. Mm -hmm. But it would be very nice if yourself you can make like a, a figure. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yep. Based on this number, just to, to represent it or even like a histogram, whatever it is, to okay. show, you know, of each one be nice to give like a a quick view be good i was kind of thinking of that okay so it kind of visually represents it a yeah. little better okay that's good okay carry on please thank you yeah and then just uh the key problems and i'll probably break this uh up a little bit more and, and go into a little bit more detail on each of them okay and then just obviously the effects of the problems all right and then uh <clears throat> kind of talking about the the argument of, of why this is happening and and why change would be beneficial in the end okay and then some recommendations and any important knowledge gaps i think uh should be included and then a conclusion and then my references obviously of course your recommendation did, did you think what you're going to put in this recommendation in the recommendations yeah um just I, I have to do a little bit more research on that to see what kind of is, would be the best way to approach it but um obviously they need to do some uh, some different protocols and be a little bit more strict with um okay. uh, like the recycling and what they use and maybe some sterilization um uh options that they have and if they can get away from kind of some single use stuff mm -hmm. and do other things that it might be a little bit more beneficial and just see if there's some ways to um, be more efficient and, and uh, do some, some less waste things. And if I have to look into seeing if they have like extra food and stuff that they, they kind of throw out too. And if that could be repurposed in different ways and stuff like that. Okay. Mm hmm Okay. And that's all I have so far. Okay, thank you. I don't know if anyone has any question, want to ask any question. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Ali. Uh, then in this case, according to this, I will go, I guess, yeah, I saw Luis here was. Luis, are you there? Okay, so you can, yeah, all right. Okay. 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 Okay, so basically that one uh, means uh, uh, 
that something maybe next week you will have something, I guess. Okay. Yeah, that's basically when I, that's what I ask about. I think what I'm going to do here, the, the means the final presentation that you are talking about. Yeah, I guess, uh, see how many we have participants so far. It's not many, it's only about seven of you here. <laughs> Yeah, well, what happened here, that uh, as I mentioned, that's how it means the essay or the report you mean, okay, of your, or your project. Now, uh, the essay, as a matter of fact, is what you call the presentation, uh, is going to be, I, 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 would, I would like to make it what you call in the last week of classes, okay, which in this case, uh, I don't know, it's going to be, uh, we'll see how it's going to work out here. That because the, as a, somebody mentioned to me that, that Friday the 9th is the last day of classes. Our full media here, okay? Which is of April, right? April 9th. So that's okay for you to do that presentation on that day? I'm asking you here. Because I think your, your final test is the day after. Yes, I think your final exam is on the 10th of, which is Saturday. Okay. Is okay? Uh, what, what is your topic now? Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So basically what you are means, uh, see, till now it didn't work out what is going to be your title finally yet, till now. So basically what I understand, did you work out the title yet or not yet? Oh, yeah, of my your research, yeah. Yeah. Okay. But uh, but what you are looking, you are looking for, say, like, uh, uh, did you forget what parameter you are using, say, like nitrogen or like phosphorus or, or like pesticide, what you are, or you're going to talk about all that? Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Good. Fracturing. Eutrophication. Yeah, eutrophication that basically, as I mentioned, eutrophication that basically when, when the nutrient likes, particularly nitrogen and phosphorus, or all these nutrients, which is basically encourages what you call plant growth, okay? And of, of these basically sometimes what they go through, what you call through the streams or from the sewage, and that basically uh, allow going to grow, especially what you call algae and the cyanobacteria. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so basically it means what you are looking, you are looking in general about the whole impact of what you call of uh, agriculture or monoculture, whatever it is, on the environment. Okay, so basically then you have to talk about, but I think this is because what I'm saying, it is a, a, a nice subject, but also is a very, very big subject. Okay, so yeah. Yeah, having talked, she haven't chatted, I haven't talked to her for a while. She, I didn't see her. She's trying <laughs> to avoid the meetings for some reason or how. <laughs> yeah, because in that case, if you what I'm suggesting, if you are both working with the same, that if each one deal with particular parameters, okay, 
because you know for your self information if you took from fertilizer pesticide uh, uh, what you call a clearing of the forest to make for for agricultural land all that so there are many many factors okay and to talk about each one of course is going to take quite a bit of work so that's what I'm saying. If you both of you dealing with the same, at least you can what you call divide which one is going to push factor and the other to the push factor. That's my opinion. It's up to you, really. Pardon? You have an idea now? Okay, yeah, good. Um, I was going to focus more on the uh, challenges of transitioning to a sustainable agriculture system. So not so much on like the industrial stuff because I knew that that's what you wanted to concentrate on. Okay then. So, okay, Chandra, you are here now. Good. So basically yeah. I will come to you later. Okay. Or okay. 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 So basically that's what you have done, you know. Okay then. So hopefully maybe next uh, meeting we'll have more tidiest type of information or arrange it better now, okay? Yes, that, that, that's what I'm saying. It means agriculture is one of the main things which also impacting, especially when you are using the monoculture. Okay, there are so many factors. Even using the heavy machine, it will make it, you got my point of view. All that, everything. So basically, in my opinion, of course, if you organize it and try to look to the factor which has the most, has more impact on the environment. Okay. You got this side, point? Yeah, it means the, the one which, uh, yeah, it's up to you really what, what is your, your interest, but of course, if you want to organize it to see which one has the highest impact, okay, all that, okay. Uh, even, even for example, even the waste which are created from uh, this farm, okay, yeah, in the waste and other thing and the bacteria, all that. So, so there are so many factors basically coming, especially from. Okay. Well, that's up to you because you see, it, it depends on you which area you find yourself leaning to have more information. Yeah, you got this point here because sometimes in your mind you have, say, uh, five or ten uh, factors going to look, but also it depends which one you have more available information on. You got this point here. Yeah, because there are many, many factors. So I, I will leave it to you. You got this point here, okay? Yeah. So basically, what happened here? I, I, it would be a good idea really, not to leave it. So if you uh, if you have the time, at least if you do something by coming Friday, uh, or in that case, it would be you know it's a good idea so that you because once you fix which then you are going to what you call search into them. Okay, once you decide which area you're going to look into it more deeply, okay? Yeah. Yeah, so basically, okay, we'll talk with you, I guess, hopefully, by next Friday, we'll have better type of organization or presentation, I guess, okay? Okay, good. Um, then I think if I uh, come here now, I don't know if, uh, is Laura here? Laura. No. Okay, Nathan, I guess it's here. No, was here. And then I finally come to Jessica. You are there. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Jessica, tell us what uh, you are doing now. Okay, so I mainly worked on my essay this week, but I added a few slides that I can share. Okay. Sorry, one second. <laughs> Okay, so I looked like more into like the key problems and like added like like explained them a little more. Mm -hmm. So uh, in terms of like the release of gases, mm -hmm. um, so glacial ice contains significant amounts of chemicals uh, deposited from earlier history. Mm -hmm. So uh, accelerated glacier glacier melting may result in excessive release of chemicals from this kind of reservoir. So uh, methyl clarates is one of these toxic gases. So um, as the glacier thaws, it is then released either as carbon dioxide or methane into the atmosphere. 
So okay. which then inherently speeds up global warming as well as melting uh, of the glaciers. And then I explained, I like uh, presented one, this one the other week. And then, oh no, sorry. I didn't explain this one yet. So uh, sea levels have changed by about 120 meters through the, glaci the glacial and interglacial cycles. However, over the time period... You said, uh, you said how many meters? 120. Do you have the the reference which uh, mentioned that? Yeah, it's right here. Church at all. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like this was over like a, a geological time period. Oh, okay, okay. But in okay. the in like the last in like the last like um in the nineteenth and twentieth century. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's only rising about like three milliliters per year. Yeah, like, that's what I thought. Okay, good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. So the major contributions to rising sea level are both the thermal expansion of the ocean and the melting of the glaciers. So currently ice sheets have been a small contrib contributor to sea level rises, but are expected to be one of the largest factors in the future. Rising okay. sea level will also contribute to more severe storm events. Okay. And then uh, less solar reflection, like as the ice melts. So uh, polar sea ice is vital to the global climate system. Solar radiation is the main energy regulating the balance mm -hmm. of glacial ice in the polar re regions. Mm -hmm. um, the atmosphere, sea ice, and oceans all interact directly and indirectly via mm -hmm. radiative transfers of energy. Mm -hmm. So this radiative energy can cause both the structure of the ice and its optical properties. Um, these changes mm -hmm. can to result in different amounts of radiative energy absorbed by the ocean and reflected back to the atmosphere, which can affect the stratification and circulation of both the atmosphere and the ocean. And that's all I've done this week. Okay. So basically, I guess uh, uh, next week we'll have a better idea, I guess. Yeah. On more information. Okay. All right. Okay, good. Thank you, Jessica, here. Now then I go back again here uh, to start from the beginning. Um, uh, James, I don't think he's around yet. Okay. Morgan, are you there? No. Okay. Okay. Uh, Chanda, we come to you now. Okay. Hello. Hello. How are you? Good. Yourself? That's good. Okay. What you have done so far? Um, I wasn't too sure how to direct my essay because, uh, like you said, me and Lewis had the same topic. So I did a lot of research. Um, and if it's okay, I wanted to focus on the challenges in transitioning to sustainable agriculture. So I figured Lewis is talking about all of the, the problems with industrial agriculture, and I can focus on some of the problems that farmers have going from the industrial agriculture to a regenerative agriculture system. Yeah, um, I'm going to ask you because uh, 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 now what you, exactly what you are looking for now? Did you figure out exactly what you were looking for? Yeah, challenges in transitioning to sustainable agriculture. So Transitions to what? So going from industrial agriculture to uh, sustainable agriculture or regenerative agriculture. Okay. So making it sustainable. Um, and then some of these challenges that I found are behavioral changes, uh, cultural changes. So things like ethics, morals, values. Yeah, because in this case, what happened here really, I think I should give me one second here. <coughs> Yeah, what you are looking for, as a matter of fact, is uh, how to be what you call um, the old type of agriculture. Uh, just give me a second here. Yeah. Uh, basically, what uh, is what you are talking about is the traditional agriculture. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. The sustainable one is the traditional one. Mm -hmm. Okay. In which basically, uh, when the people or the older farmer, they, their agriculture was almost in harmony with the environment. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So basically, you are looking to this one. Yeah. But because the, the problem on, in, in reality, what happened here with the agriculture, uh, what we are facing is, is the following here. Now, for anybody, because of course, as you know, because the human population is increasing, you've got this point here. Mm -hmm. This is one point. So basically, there's a real problem how to feed all those people. 
But yes. at the same time, what is happening here, uh, due to this, what you call a new technology, civilization, whatever you call presenting, is the people working with agriculture becoming less and less and less. You got this point here. And that's why sometimes they are forced to use this. But nevertheless, I guess, you can also compare what is the, what you call, uh, at least from an academic point of view, the difference between, for example, a traditional type of agricultures and what you call the modern type of agriculture. Okay? Because in the traditional one, even the farmer, when they want to, to uh, what you call, to plant a particular uh, crop or something, even they, they develop this idea, they go to idea in which is more ecologically suited to that particular type of crop. You go this point here. And also they rotate the crop all the time. They don't use the same crop every year. And that's why, of course, one of the reasons when you rotate the crop that you give a chance to the soil to build its nutrient naturally. While, for example, in case of monoculture in which you use the same crop year after year, Natural, of course, you need to use a lot of fertilizer after a while. You got this point here. So basically, that is the point you are looking. So it's a good article to look at it, but this is what I'm giving you some ideas. Okay. Okay. So it's okay if I choose this topic. Oh yes, of course, yeah. Okay. Um, I do have a few articles already, um, scientific articles to reference. Okay. So yeah, because agriculture is very, very important. Because without agriculture, how you feed the people? Simple yeah. as that. <laughs> you got this point here. Point <laughs> you got the, people can do anything, but they have to eat in the end. <laughs> All right? <laughs> That's the point here. Okay, so basically, I guess that next week we'll have a better idea, and then you show us some, some slide or something like that. Yeah, I can prepare a presentation for... Yeah, because that will help you. Because really, we don't have much time left, huh? Yeah. Okay. All right, so basically now here, Chanda. Okay, is Owen there, Owen? No, okay. And I guess already I will talk with something, okay. Now, anybody else want to talk something here? Because it seems already everybody here has already talked about. And anybody didn't talk yet here or present themselves? Hi, I came in a couple minutes late, but you were already- Oh yeah, yes, yeah, yes, I mean, hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. So how far did you go? Um, I'm not too much further um, <laughs> in my PowerPoint. I've done some more research. Okay. Um, so I'm going to show you what I have so far. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, you didn't do any kind of PowerPoint yet? Does it matter even if, if a couple of slides at least? Um. Yeah, I have some stuff for it. Just okay. one second. Okay, you can show us. Sorry, I'm just trying to open it here. That's fine. There we go. Okay. Um, share screen. Okay. So First, I'm going to talk about like different types of renewable energy, just a little intro into like the main types. Um, and then I'll talk about solar yeah, power. Yeah, just give me one second here. What is your title? What did, what did you do oh. the title now? Issues Facing Renewable Energy. Okay, that's your title. Good. Um, so then I'm going to talk about solar power, the benefits of it, and then the issues facing it. And I'm going to talk about the environmental, economical Good issues efforts. and then okay. other ones that I find. Okay. And then I'm going to do the same thing for wind power. And then new advancements in renewable energy technology. Okay. Um, like even 10 years ago, it wasn't as reliable as it is today. So I'll talk okay. about that. And then recent trends. So like the increase in it, um, any trends in other countries and like mention like if we should be following those trends. And that's all I have so far. Okay. All right. So did you know or did you figure out uh, 
apart from what type of renewable energy going to focus on more? I'm going to focus more on wind and solar um, because okay. those are kind of the more common ones and people can put that in their homes pretty easily. Mm -hmm. um, but if I still have some extra time, I might go into a little more detail about the other ones as well. Okay. Okay. So do you have anything more to say or that's it? That's all I have right now. I have some other okay. research, but I haven't really put it into the PowerPoint yet. Yeah, because, yeah, but really you make sure that at least if possible that next week you have something more, okay? Yep, for sure. Yeah, Thank because you. the next week is going to be almost like, uh, yeah, the 19th, all right? So uh, next Friday, yeah. When is the due date again? The due date, according to this, is going to be, the due date is going to be April the 9th. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Yeah, April the 9th. Okay. Now, I didn't finish as a matter of fact. <clears throat> now, because I know you are very tight in this case here. So what I'm suggesting that, of course, you do your presentation on the 9th, which is basically in the last day of classes, going to be Friday. And though, for example, here you have your um, uh, final exam in the, what you call, uh, almost uh, the next day, okay? So in this case, I don't know if you if that's okay with you. I give you a time, for example, for your, to, to hand me the report or your report. So either if you finish from it, you can hand it to me on the day of the presentation, or I give you an, another week. What do you suggest? I, oh, I'm asking you. I'm fine with whatever. It doesn't matter to me. No, no, what I'm suggesting here that uh, I'm going to ask you the, in general because it depends really what you have. Now, the week which is basically, for, which is started from 12 April to the 16 of April. How many exams do you have in general? Five. You have five exams? Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? I have one in that week. Okay. I have four. Yeah, I have four. one as well. Yeah. No, what I'm suggesting here that if I, because if I make like this so that you can reach to kind of, uh, if last, uh, what do you call, uh, on April the 9th, we're going to be your presentation. Okay. And then I will say, for example, Friday the 16th of April, the due date for your report. Is that okay with you? That would be great. You go, you, go, you go this point here? Yeah. So that give you a time. Though I think you are going to be, most of you are busy in your exam. All right. But in this case, because what happened here, uh, still, of course, by the time when I get your result, your exam, the time correction, something like that. So still I have the time when I receive it, then I can correct it and do your marking. You go this point here. Okay. So basically, tentatively, I'm going to mention it like this, that your presentation is going to be on April the 9th, which is going to be Friday. And the due date for your, uh, re of the report is April the 16th. Okay? Anybody has any question, please? I just have a question. So on April okay. 9th, will we be doing our presentations in class? Like, are we all expected to be presenting in that hour and 20 minutes that we have? No, no, no. Because in the, uh, on that day, I have to give a lecture. Most probably. You got this point okay. here. Okay. Yeah. So it's going to be something like this. I will do it after the lecture. Okay. I'm just wondering if there will be that okay? Time. Is that okay with everyone or is it going to work out? That should be fine. Um, yeah. Because, because still, I think that you have quite a bit of material I try to cover now, okay, yeah. <clears throat> for you. And so basically what I'm suggesting, if I finish the material, at least we'll do some sort of overviewing. If I didn't finish the material, some I, I, something will add it, you know, for your material. But uh, the tutorial, I will make it, for example, uh, it's going to be after that. And in this case, because I think some people are working, I don't know if that day they are working. So maybe I will do the tutorial. I will start from two o'clock. I don't know. 
so that the people who are working are able to attend later on. I'm going to ask them again. Anybody can give me an input on this? No. Okay, because I can see that about uh, uh, four or five are absent today, so far to now. Because I know about two, two people or something that are working at the time between one and two or something like this. So that's why I'm I try to make sure that everybody can attend. Okay. And I was just wondering because I know the presentations you you want them at fifteen minutes, correct? Yeah, that's that's, that's another issue because it may take a long time. Not like that. Yeah. Okay. Well, in that case. See how it's going to work out. I'm going to ask you now, the one who are present at the moment, what you have on on Wednesday morning, say between nine and twelve or one o'clock. Anybody has a lecture? On on the seventh. Yeah, on the seventh. Yeah. Uh, I have class until ten that day. You have class until ten on that day. Anybody else? I have class till one. You have a class till one. Anybody else? I have class till four on Wednesdays. Oh, okay. I have class till 1130, but then I also have some mandatory meetings that I have to attend. Okay, 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 seems all right. I know it's not that easy, all right. Well, actually, what I'm going to do this in this case, basically, that because if you are, uh, if we are about here, 13 one, 13 student, all right, and if we limit basically the presentation to 10 minutes per person, that's okay. All right, that's how, how many minutes going to be all together? Uh, that'll be just over two hours. Yeah, so that you get over with on that same day. Of course, they will have about a few minutes between each or somebody get longer and attend or something like that. So simply I'm going to mention to you here that even if I start at two o'clock, all right? So simply, I guess by four, four thirty will be done. That's okay with everyone or how you figure it out? I'm good with that. Okay, anybody else? Give me an idea or suggestion. All right, so everyone is okay with this or how will you feel like it? Because I know next day you have an exam anyway. That's fine with me. All right, okay. Okay, so basically I think it seems we have to leave it like this anyway. You got this point here? Yeah. And how do you find yourself, how, how long do you take your time to cover your material for the exam as a studying? At what time is your exam on, on Saturday? Put it down. 2 p.m. Uh, 2 p.m.? Yeah. Okay. Is it a cumulative exam? Yes, it's going to be a cumulative, yeah. Okay, thanks. Okay, any more question, please? All right, it seems everyone here. I am uh, okay. So who's came here? This All right. Hi, Jordan. You came back, I guess. You are. You are there, Jordan Lynch? I've Hello? been here the whole time. Yeah. Did you do your presentation now? I already did it. Okay. Yeah, you did already. Yeah, I can see that. Okay. Okay. So basically, it seems that uh, because still I have a few students didn't show up yet. Maybe I'm waiting a little bit here. So basically, I will thank you for this. I'm going to stay, of course, I could keep Zoom on because I'm expecting maybe. Uh, like maybe Morgan or James, okay, they will maybe come later on, but I'm going to leave it on. And uh, 
I don't know if you have any more question or anything you want to know, just let me know. Otherwise, we'll, you know, you can, you know, feel free to uh, to leave if you want to go. It's up to you. Okay. Good day. Okay, take care. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye-bye. <clears throat> Thank you. Have a good weekend. The same for you. Okay.